Welcome to Intune Training without Adam, Steve, and Ben. Hey, everyone. Hey, guys. So, right. what are we going to be looking at today? Well, we're going to fix some mistakes we made in the last video, and then we're going to try running our code. We Design. made mistakes? Yeah, everyone it happens. Mistakes, Sean. Yeah. I I'm surprised you could remember we made those mistakes way back when. <laughs> You're at where you are right now in your career because you have made a certain set of mistakes. But over and over have, and over again. Yes. Yes. All right. So what mistakes did we make? Well, let's pop back over and take a look. Uh, there's two. First of all, we need to go back into our Azure app registration, head over to the authentication section, and we're going to allow public client flows in this particular case. Default to no. So we'll say yes here. We'll give it a save. And then in my haste, I gave the incorrect API permission. We had just user read write. We do need user read write all, if I'm correct. Right. So we're going to go I back to graph now. Yes. Delegated permission again. Scroll on down to user. Sometimes the search works for us in this case, not working for me. So then we'll grab that user read write all. And we'll hit add. And you'll notice, oh, go ahead, Johannes. Yeah, so just because you've granted admin consent before, that does not mean it applies to all future permissions. So you need to check this every time you add a new permission. And we're going to do that right away. Wham, At that point, we should be good. The only thing that like we had mentioned that you're going to need is on the overview page, and that's going to be your application client ID. You will also need your primary domain name which we can find on the overview page of Active Directory. Um, you'll notice right in our primary domain, you'll want to make sure that you go here, verify that it is what you think it is. I cannot tell you the amount of times I see uh, different like dot on Microsoft um, domain show up instead of your actual primary domain. So you'll want to make sure that you have the correct one there. Once we have that, though, we can pop into that script that we had created earlier Put that client ID, put in that tenant ID, and we can start, you know, grabbing a user because we're just doing a simple get on the user's URI. Um, we did include at the top here, which we'll also include in the uploaded script, an option to install the MSAL PowerShell module. You will need this in order for this to function. Um, I've actually already got it set up, so we can comment that out for now. Um, we can just simply go ahead and run it. See what happens. Let's see what happens. Hey, look at that. that. Well, I think we need to click on the link and type in this fancy password in order to actually sign in. So let so me go that back. Microsoft.com slash device login. Yep. For anyone who couldn't quite read the tiny text because we're old. <laughs> we'll throw in that key that we had. We'll say, yeah, I want to sign in with my account but I want to impersonate Ben as a wiggle. So yes, I am definitely trying to sign in as Ben as a wiggle. Ben is wiggle. a wiggle. So now you, so now you yes. actually have to close the window or else it won't complete. So there you go. We'll pop back over here. Oh, Looks yeah, like we got like a lot that. of stuff. Let's make this a little bit yeah. bigger so we can actually see what's going on here. So are we saying that worked? It looks like it did in this case. We've got an access token and everything. Yep, so that's that access token we were talking about earlier. If you were curious to actually see what it looks like. Um, do, 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 scrolling down a little bit. Got our ID token that gets created. And then eventually we get all of the values back for the users. Um, in this case, we can see we've got Adam in there. Uh, another Adam test account. More atoms. More atoms. And then we've got this dot, 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 because it doesn't actually Too show you the full value. Anything beyond atom. Yeah. Too many atoms. Exactly. Um, but again, super simple at the end of the day, once you have all your permissions set up to at least get data. Um, we'll dive in like how to create, you know, pass and body information, different things like that in later episodes. But just running, you know, against those URLs to get some information can be incredibly straightforward. Anything else you guys want to add? Um, I think the only thing that I'll say is just to kind of tie, you know, essentially these three videos, 
that were totally not recorded back to back together. Um, if you remember in that first video, we, we basically called out everything that we had in our, our original video. We showed the method, we showed the URI, um, and we made the call. And then we came back and we talked about uh, all the different pieces in the script. So if you just want to drag that line down there real quick, Jake. So yeah, here we can basically see we used invoke rest method. And with it, we had those exact switches, the method, the URI, and the headers. And that's what we did to make the call. Um, so it, even though we've got the stuff with uh, authentication and authorization at the top, and we had the whole video where we set up the uh, app registration, realistically, this is what it all boils down to is, again, we're just making a simple REST method by passing in the method, the URI, and any headers. And that's how we got the response. So. Awesome. Well, obviously, comments, questions, concerns. Again, you've heard me say it a million times. Feel free to leave it down in the comments section down below. And with that, have a great one. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.